Hey, how's it going, all you lovely people at Shut Door Door Shutter? Coming back to you with episode 53 of the All the Mods 9 Let's Play series. And I have been working on getting some progress done off camera. So, what I've done here is basically gotten rid of all of our hyperbox um, farms because this is easier to chunk load and I can put a lot more inside of a chunk as well. You can see that we have tons of Inferium Essence being made. Uh, we also have, of course, just different materials being made per layer. Uh, each one of them, of course, is different. Each one of them doing something else for us. Of course, I've got a few other seeds here, but uh, I'm not going to work on those just yet because uh, that's just an off-camera thing. But this is what I've been working on uh, without, you know, recording and stuff. But, uh, yeah, this is, this has been a long process of getting all of the seeds and everything. Of course, some of these weren't as hard, but, uh, the botany pots is definitely helping me get them. And, of course, we have some odd ones where we have, like, compressed iron seeds, so that way we don't have to worry about compressed iron ingots or anything like that. Uh, of course, we've still got some of the other ones. Uh, I've made, like, our fish seeds and our squid seeds. I've made those to where we don't have to worry about those being in a botany pot. We can get a ton of them. Uh, we've got things like the prismarine, we've got emeralds, we've got, of course, obsidian, and obsidian actually is not growing because I forgot the ender chest. I just placed the obsidian because I had to redo some of this here. Uh, this is just this chest here. Perfect. And uh, that should be cruising. But then over here, of course, is our crafting station for all of this materials. Uh, they go into this chest go into a specific storage drawer, and then it's pulled out using these laser nodes. And then, of course, everything is crafted inside of these crafters, and uh, it's working pretty well, not going to lie. So, yeah, we've we've kind of just been doing that. We've got a pretty decent amount of Insanium as well. That's been processing. Um, and the reason I've been doing a lot of this stuff is because this should be getting us a lot more of what we need. Um, for example, we've got 137,000 emeralds, which is definitely not enough. So one of the things that I've been doing as well is getting us more deep learners. Uh, these are, uh, are these the, where are they at? Oh, they're over here. So more deep learners. These are the, uh, creeper and I believe skeleton. The reason I've gotten these, of course, is so we can get the catalyzing glands and the rib bones for the lily pads of fertility. Which, of course, I've been making a ton of with that uh, that farm over here. I don't remember where it was. Um, you can see that we have a lot of lily pads placed all over the place here. But this is not finalized, right? We've got quite a few more seeds to place. Uh, like these Ultimodium seeds, which are tier magical. And one of the things with these is I actually need to get magical soil. So magical soil is not cheap. It requires dragon scales. And the only way to get these dragon scales, of course, is to take out an ender dragon. Um, so we might look at that today. But uh, yeah, so we've we've got that. I've got 320 vibranium blocks. I wouldn't mind most of this by hand, by the way. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the unobtainium because I'm going to let you on to something here. So one of the things that I realized with our progression to apotheosis enchanting... Uh, let's go down to that, wherever those are. So with the actual setup of all three of these, we can actually get what is called a... Um, what is that called? Apotheosis charm, I believe. This thing right here, charm of... Uh, and this one's netherite sight here. So if we wanted to, we can actually take this and put this in the second one, which I don't remember what this one is, but it'll actually allow for us to infuse. Of course, you can look here. There's your requirements. You've got 50, Eternia, 8.5 to 13.5, Quanta, and then, of course, 32.5 to 37.5, Arcana, which is basically what this falls under. So once we infuse this, it's actually unbreakable. So if I activate this, it never will break, which is fantastic, okay? So if we take that, and of course, this is what I did with the Vibranium, is you make this with the Vibranium Sight Potions, um, so I can do this with Unobtainium, and then I can go around the end and just harvest. Of course, this takes a lot more time, but honestly, I'm not breeding up bees uh, because this was a useless, like the Unobtainium bees here, absolutely useless, not gonna lie. Um, just because the fact that it took so long to do basically nothing. Uh, that's the problem. So, 
Yeah, this has been a work in progress, and I think what we're going to do today is actually make some more progress on it by actually figuring out how to get an Ender Dragon killing system going. Um, so let me look into a couple things here real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm actually referencing one of my older videos. I'll leave this a link down in the description from the Direwolf 21.20 mod pack. Um, that actually allows for us to kind of get a better system thought about, um, cause the one I made back then absolutely was perfect. There was some tweaks and stuff we had to make throughout the episode and throughout time, but that was kind of understandable because things change, mods update, stuff like that. One of the problems that I'm thinking that we're going to run into here is we are going to have, um, what do you call it? to see if the mod that changes the Ender Dragon in the island will actually affect the Ender Dragon spawn or anything of that sort, right? Because um, if it does, that's a problem. Um, if it doesn't, fantastic. I don't really care if we're wasting stasis chambers. Um, one of the other things is I think we have plenty of power to run this. Um, I think... All right, we've got ultimate power cables, flux plugs everywhere. I don't think we're going to be worried. But I, what I want to do is just in case, let's add four more flux plugs to our network. So that way they push more power. Can I get... I would need more. How is, what's the best way to get this? We may, we may hold off on the dragon for a second because I want to see if we can get a better mass amount of storage for our flux because I don't want this to fail, right? I want to make sure that we're not going to accidentally blow this up after creating it because that would be a major waste of time. So let me look into some solutions here to see if I can figure out the best option for automating flux networks. I could do bees. That is an option. I really don't want to do bees. I've spent so I've spent what like a week working on bees, and I'm kind of burnt out on them still. Uh, bees has just never been my favorite in the first place. So let me experiment, and I'll be right back. Alrighty. So let's get this going. This shouldn't be too complicated. We just need to set up some things properly. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to set a modular router here. We're going to start with this. Of course, our flux block for the actual redstone is sitting here. And what we're going to do is on this bottom one, we're going to put a breaker module. We're going to make sure that this goes to the front. And we're going to make sure that this breaks anything. Because, of course, it could be obsidian. It could be cobblestone. We don't need to set a filter here. Okay. Let's also just throw some speed upgrades in there. The next thing is, is setting one on top of here, which is our placer module. The placer module will then place in the front, and of course we're going to whitelist this to be obsidian just in case. We're going to also do speed upgrades in here. Next thing is, we're going to straight up void the cobblestone. So we're going to go here, we're going to have two sender modules, one that has whitelist obsidian, send it back up. The other one is going to be blacklist obsidian, send it to the right. Okay, so that's going to be the trash can module basically. Um, the next thing that we want to do is have a dropper module with redstone here. Let's grab that real quick. With redstone. And we're going to say whitelist, redstone, and we've got stack augments. So this drops an entire stack at once because we don't want it to drop one because then we'll be wasting obsidian and time. And then that should be that. Okay. So the next thing is, is the vacuum later we're actually going to need some flux dust real quick so we know what to pick up so the vacuum later we can actually probably put this right here on the ground and we can throw in a item filter item filter allow and then throw flux dust in here or you could deny redstone whatever one you want to do that is up to you we're also going to quickly throw down a demagnetization coil so that way we do not pick stuff up we're going to just leave it blank. We don't want to pick anything up in this little area. And that is fantastic. Okay. So the next thing is, is once the obsidian is placed, we need to actually left click it. That's where this player simulator comes in. And this is going to be very, very simple. Okay. So logic cable uh, is needed at the back of this player simulator. The player simulator, you click in here, you get a variable card, put it in the click empty. Okay, we're going to click on this plus sign. We're going to go over to right click. 
And we're also going to go over to continuous click. Okay, so just mark those off. That should be set up, all right? So what should happen now is if we throw redstone in here, should drop it, should become flux, should be picked up. Perfect, just like that, done. Flux networks automated. <laughs> um, next thing we probably wanna do is figure out how we're going to get obsidian in here. And what I'm actually going to do is get a crafter. We're gonna do um, mystical agriculture here. And that will allow for us to get, of course, redstone and the um, redstone and obsidian, right? So actually, I need this to go up one more because I want to place this to where I can actually just pipe into this. And that way, that way it'll have obsidian. Um, actually, I probably need to do laser IO because if I do it this way... I should be able to prevent this from overflowing in any capacity. Uh, let's actually quickly go grab these crafters here. So item cards. So what we're going to do is on the up direction, we're going to do extract. Uh, we only really need this to go to one. But let's do at laser. I would, even though I already had it up, that's okay. Let's keep it at one, but let's minimize the amount of time it takes. Yeah, let's go two. Okay, so extract, and then on the back of the modular router, we're going to insert with a counting filter of obsidian. Because we want to basically only have one going in here at a time. Because, of course, if we have too many in here, it won't be able to pick up the cobblestone, and it could cause issues, right? So, that should be good. And this should work once we get the obsidian seeds uh in here so i think i have some obsidian seeds back up top here yep perfect and i don't have redstone seeds actually made yet so i'll have to look at that now uh, was that the create room nope which one was that uh or processing yes or processing is where we threw this so what we should be able to do is get a creative hopper botany pot get up here uh put a chest uh do we have a sophisticated barrel we do uh, let's grab a void upgrade for this we're trying to make sure that we don't do the um essence the fertilized essence or yeah is that what it's called this stuff right here fertilized essence is what it's called so void upgrade just do Vertilized Essence, make sure it voids any, works in GUI as well. And we should be able to grab some Insanium Farmland. And some Obsidian Seeds. And then this should just start cranking. Okay, so let's just speed that up a little bit. So it'll start filling this up. And then of course we'll set our recipe here. To be Obsidian. Apply. And... Oh, I forgot I need to have something pushing, right? Uh, what can I do here? I, I, does sophistic I don't think Sophisticated has any way to push items, right? It's just... Okay, here. This. This might work. We may need to upgrade the barrel, but that'll be fine. I didn't know there was a hopper upgrade. Is that new? Or have I just missed that the entire time? possible it's very possible that i've missed it we'll just grab the advanced one just in case and then we're going to need to get a sophisticated upgrade basic to diamond that'll work might as well we'll throw the hopper oh and this actually has like configuration this is definitely new this is definitely new okay and then of course it doesn't matter if this fills up actually i think it does doesn't it uh, just because we might as well. Uh, do I have... Okay, so I do have counting filters on me. So up, extract, uh, card overclocker. We'll just take 64. We'll do on the bottom here. That, 64, perfect. And that should be golden. So what we should then need to do now is get the redstone stuff automated. Just basically going to copy this. So what I'll do is I'll be right back once this is complete.
All right, we're off to the races, everybody. It's cruising. And I'm gonna, uh, the power's gonna run out here in a second on these uh, crafters, but that's fine. Um, I mean, yeah, this is working. So what I probably wanna do here real quick is grab some glass. Uh, this is also probably shooting everywhere because this is full, but that's okay. Is there a way for me to do that though? Uh, yes, if I do redstone mode low and give it a strong signal. Perfect. So what we'll need to do is get a pipe. Place that here. Do app pipes. Advanced upgrade. I need a create wrench. And then we can just do ender chest. Piece of stone. And then, of course, we will quickly go get the functional storage drawer put up for this uh, at functional. Oak drawer, diamond upgrades. We'll do a void upgrade on here just in case. Void upgrade. And then flux dust. Not Fluix. We still need to automate Fluix at one point, but we'll do that sooner or later. And then linking and locking tool. And that should be perfect. So, of course, what we can do now is grab our drives, empty it out, make sure all of that is golden. Perfect. And we have 6,000 flux in there. So, what I can do as well is grab another wireless connector. to keep that thing going properly. So let's do wireless connection point here. Let's grab our wireless connection setup kit. And then let's go to the ore processing room. And this may start firing again, which is fine. Let me get the wireless connection point there. This stuff just ran out of power, which is good. And then we can get a toggle. Uh, what is it called? So level emitter. So if we do at flux, I think we actually need to take this off here for a second. Where is my network tool? And we just need to throw this in our inventory. No? How do I make a... How do you make the inverted version? Okay, so now it's just... It's that. What, what was I thinking then? This? That's what I was thinking. Inverted toggle bus. Okay. That's fine. Just wanted to make sure I was on the same page there. So Fluix Dust, or Flux Dust, not Fluix. Getting confused now. Uh, we want to say we want 60,000 in the system. Why 60,000? No idea. Actually, I think we need to do it this way, don't we? That should just keep cruising once we provide power. Okay. And that one's full. Okay. So we'll let this run. Um, we shouldn't have too many issues with it. Once this, of course, toggles off, it'll be fine. I think the only real issue is I wish we had something to make sure that there was a block here. Um, I think. I think we could do that. 
right? That's like vanilla redstone. Hold on, let's try that. Well, let's just remove this, set that back up there. And if we were to grab a redstone... Uh, let's set the let's see if we can do Oop, did I break this? I did. Okay. Uh redstone torch, redstone repeater, and then on this other side we do a redstone repeater. So if there is no block there, right? So if we were to take this out for a second, or not that one, not that one. Hold on, I need to take out the the plot the placer module. Where did that one go? Oh, it's way over here for some reason. Let's put that back. Right click. Continuous right click. Um, and then if we got rid of the placer module here for a second, got rid of this block. So see how that's working? So if there's no block here, then that means that this would shut off. Um, by using like an AND gate or something. I think. We would just need to reconfigure this to maybe come out to this side. So let's do and gate. So we'd want, we probably want a two-sided and gate. Yeah, two input and gate. There we go. So then we would want to put this. Ooh, this is going to be difficult, isn't it? So we may want to put that here. And we can run the ME level emitter a couple blocks back. Nope. And then that. And then so what that would mean... Oh, let's see. So this would need to be 60,000, right? 60,000 flux dust. And once this emits, this would shut off, right? So that's kind of what we're thinking. Something like that. So if there's no more obsidian left... I don't... I, no, I'm not thinking this. Hold on. Because basically what I'm thinking is we should have this on high, right? So it can't drop unless every condition is met. So let's say... Let's pick this up here real quick. How do I... Can I make this into an, an NAND gate? I don't think I can. So let's go to input NAND gate. Actually, uh, let's see. Do we have a two input OR gate? I guess it really wouldn't matter in this case, right? Because your OR gate will be either OR on all three of them. We just need to place it correctly. And then this one we'd want to emit when levels are below. No? Hold on. <laughs> okay. So, XOR gate is what I'm thinking of. Because what we want is, so this redstone signal passes through this block, which allows for this to say, hey, we've got a piece of obsidian here, so you have a signal that can be sent out to activate this dropper. Okay? Then the next portion would be, this is going to be off until 60,000, because at that point, we should have... Uh, this happens. So let's just say we need five. This should prevent the system from actually running. Because at that point, we're like, hey, we've got 60,000. It doesn't matter if there's a block there or not. 
we are just going to run. The only issue, of course, being that if we don't have enough subsidian, it's going to cause an issue, but we should have more than enough because this is less used than this system here. So, I hope that works. I hope that's explained well enough. If it's not, of course, leave comments down below, but that's an automated flux network. Um, I definitely have not done that before, so that definitely took a little bit of brain power, and I may not have been that clear with it, but that's okay. And I think what we're going to do is, since that's solved, I'm going to get the rest of this stuff figured out, um, the actual power system stuff figured out, and we're going to come back next episode and work on getting the Ender Dragon stuff automated. That shouldn't be too complicated. Hopefully, we'll make an episode of it and we'll kind of see what we can do. I think we have a lot of the same mods in this, so we should be able to do the same stuff. But uh, yeah, this has been enjoyable. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay awesome. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.